for tuning in to the Organically Blunt Show, a show dedicated to cannabis and the lifestyle that surrounds it, including cultivation, business, music, food, and everything in between. If you like this podcast, be sure to subscribe and follow us. The content on this show is strictly for educational purposes only. Some things on this show may be considered harmful to some. Organically Blunt does not endorse any harmful activity. If you're not 18 or older, please exit now. This episode is brought to you by Horticulture Lighting Group. The future of horticulture lighting has arrived. Shop the highest yield generating LED lamps in the world. Real efficiency, real yields, made in the USA. Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to Organically Blunt. I am Jay Blaze, your host. And this evening, we have the pleasure of speaking with two I consider legends once I found out who you guys were. No disrespect. I'm new to the industry. We got Tad Hussey and Chad Westport from Dope History, a new podcast that has just hit my Spotify airwaves. And I've listened to every episode so far, and I'm hooked. So welcome to the show, gentlemen. Thank you. Thanks for having us. No problem. So... You know, from what I gather, you know, Dope History is a podcast that is just like it says, Dope History. So I want to hear more about how you guys came up with it, some of the guests you guys have already had, and what we can look forward to. So I'll let you guys take the reins. Well, I can cover a little bit about what how we came up with it, and then maybe, Chad, you can talk about where we're going. Does that sound yeah. good? Excellent. Cool. Well, this all started way back in 2018. Um, a friend of mine, Nelson, over at Poetry of Plants and I were having a phone conversation about some of the people in the industry uh, and sort of how this industry really started in the history of it and how a lot of people these days just don't know a lot about it. And there's a lot I don't know about it. Um, and that got us talking about, I, I think um, someone famous had just passed that year. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head who it was. But it made me sad that I didn't get to hear that story. And so basically what we wanted to do was, is capture some of these narratives and share the story. Because a lot of people, uh, I, I say kids these days, you know, I'm 45, I, uh, Chad and I are about the same age. Uh, kids these days don't, uh, don't know what it was like back in the day when, when you wanted to grow, you know, 20 years ago. Um, it was a totally different scene. It was... Uh, it was very scary and, and people put their lives on the line literally to grow this plant. And some of the stories around it are just are really, really cool. So uh, that's where it all started. And actually a couple of, a few of the interviews are all the way from back in 2018 when we originally wanted to launch it. And then, well, life happens, uh, things didn't quite work out the way we originally thought. And then uh, I, I reached out and Chad responded and we reconnected and, uh, he was really able to help me uh, get this thing launched in terms of like putting it together into a uh, coherent podcast. Because I didn't want it to be a, a traditional podcast, you know, kind of like this where it's like a, an interviewer, an interviewee. I really wanted it to feel more like a serial podcast, if you ever heard those, where it's like a storyline. And it's really the focus is on the person. It's not on the interviewer. You know, we're just kind of in the background trying to fill in fill in the gaps and so chad did an awesome job writing the, all the scripts and sort of making the podcast or the interviews into essentially a podcast um you want to talk about where it's where we're hopefully headed from here and a little bit more about some of the guests yeah you know absolutely it's, as and as tad said i kind of came into the project um you know years after it had started and i'm glad that i did it's been fun for me because you know like you said a few of these interviews were from 2018 and you know a couple of people have passed since then og eddie let being the you know the prime example here um but getting to listen to all this raw audio you know and and to hear you know kind of both sides of the conversation here to hear the raw audio to hear like the passion um that these people really put into this project 
uh that was a complete honor so that was fun for me stepping in immediately that was my world just absorb and soak in all this knowledge and try to recombine it and you know put out the episode with that and for the future we're going to keep doing the same thing you know we're we're out there to document the history i like the fact that season one um you know tad had said that 20 years ago and i have a tendency to say 20 years ago because 20 years ago always seems like a long time but Dude, it was already 2000 by then. So a lot of these guys are like 40, almost 50 years ago, from 70s and 80s. And yeah. we're unfortunately at that point where, um, you know, whether you had a healthy lifestyle or not, uh, it's kind of the time when we start to lose people. So we're focusing on some of the older generation of you know, growers, breeders, activists, just people that were involved. And so season two, something that we're trying to, to work on right now is with a lot of these legacy breeders. Um, you know, the I, I in particular follow like breeding and, and the seed game and strains. And so we see a lot of, you know, current history. Um, I heard somebody the other day say cookies was old school. And to them, it, it very likely is. You know, it's old school. All, it's all relative to when you enter. But, you know, hearing something like that, uh, is, to me, it was just like mind blowing. So we're setting out to talk with a lot of these legacy breeders who, you know, built the building blocks that are being used today or that are even in the second or third phase from them we're going back to talk to them about their story you know we're not necessarily you know accurate accuracy is great but history time memories those things tend to fade so you know what was it like breeding back then nobody talked about being a breeder now it's cool but back then nobody's like i'm a breeder but they were selective, you know, doing selections for certain strains to not get arrested, right? So yeah, season two, that's kind of what we're gonna focus on. But going forward into the future, um, there's so many areas for us to explore. I mean, you can even go down to New York City, like Washington uh, Park. Well, there's a huge history there. I mean, hate Ashbury. So many of these people all interconnect and it's fun to to kind of make those connections for everybody. So that, that's what we're aiming for in the future in a <laughs> less than short answer. Definitely, definitely, you know. And, you know, when you say cookies, they say cookies might be old school to them. They're probably very adolescent to a lot mm -hmm. of this, you know. And and that that definitely that that shows through that answer but uh, i had to chuckle when you said that <laughs> definitely yeah. you know you guys only got a few years on me not a whole lot but <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, it, it, i'm sorry to cut you off there but I, you know it's like i want to say I, you know i don't i want to make sure that you know it's like i'm not making fun of these people it's all when you enter because like i I remember being a kid, I'm a music guy, and I remember like, oh, you know, Led Zeppelin's so old school, saying this to like my uncle or somebody who's like, dude, I was raised on that. Uh, <laughs> because I've had people tell me Nirvana's so old school, and well, dude, I was raised on that. So yeah, it, it's all relative to when you get in. Definitely, definitely. You know, and there, like you said, there is a lot of unique things. We had Jorge Cervantes on yesterday, and like he, like he said in Spain, he said, you know, you wouldn't believe it, but a lot of these legal organizations that have gone commercial mainstream are actually owned by the Russian mafia. And he said, you wouldn't believe it, but they're invested. And, and, and to hear that from somebody like that, it's like, wow, wow. Okay. I didn't know that, you know, well, most people probably ain't supposed to, but you know, well, cats out of the bag. <laughs> yeah. That's part of the aim, too, of like the legal industry was to try to move away from that business model almost. You know, you kind of almost have to show where the funding comes from. And, and you know, there's there's not the same opportunities uh, for those people that were in the past. But, you know, hopefully I'm knocking on knocking on the wood desk. But federal legalization, I would love for that to come because, again, that opens opportunities for a lot more legitimate people with legitimate money trying to enter the enter the market space but it does not surprise me there's a there's a black hand involved here definitely 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 and you know i hate to say it like i've told everybody you know when you think of cannabis and you think of you know 
uh, alcohol or anything else, even tobacco. There was a prohibition era. There was an era where the, what we call now the legacy market here was a legacy market for them too, but in a different standard. And kind of everything kind of, in, in a sense, follows suit. And um, not not exactly, but you you know, as a as a formulation. And um, it's just it's just so crazy to see. Uh, um, you know, when it does go mainstream, you know, so many people are on both sides of the table. When we first started our show, it was so hard for me to just get breeders to come on and talk because mm -hmm. they didn't want to be in the spotlight. The same thing with glass blowers, you know, I can't get a glass blower to come on for the life of me. So, <laughs> because the ones that we do talk to on our local standpoint, they're like, I don't want nothing to do with it being in front of the camera. And you're like, well, I can respect that. So you, your art is forever seen through your work, but we would love to tell your story. But sometimes you don't always get them stories and it, and it becomes difficult, definitely. You, you guys know that, definitely. So what, uh, what can we look forward to in the next? Is there any episodes maybe we could get like a a little upcoming slip of what what to expect of one of the upcoming episodes like well uh i know tad has has already started a little bit of work on some season two things i guess i don't know we can maybe let the one or two things out of the bag if you want there tad um yeah i mean just going back to season one though we have we're releasing an episode every week so we've got four episodes out now we still have actually jorge cervantes one of the people you mentioned uh we have an episode with him we have an episode with tommy chong that's uh, yeah. really pretty fun i got to interview him twice so i got over two hours of footage with him um fascinating guy really cool and then um uh who am i forgetting oh wolf siegel yep. is another one that's it who a lot of people may not know um but the the one that came out this week was Tom Alexander, who founded a magazine called Sensimia Tips. Um, and his story is really fascinating. I've been friends with Tom for years. And uh, a lot of people don't know like his story and, or even have heard of Sensimia Tips. But like when you mentioned Sensimia Tips to Ed Rosenthal, Ed is like, oh yeah, that's where, that's where I went for information when I first started growing. That was where I look, looked to it. Because this was before High Times. This was before... Uh, Growing Edge, which was his second publication. This is all there was at the time. Um, and, you know, Tom Alexander went on Donahue, did a bunch of different things. And so um, that's really where it all started. And Wolf Siegel was the first person to write about Sea of Green in Sensimia Tits, which is a method of growing that, you know, almost every cultivator these days knows of putting in multiple small plants in um, as a way of getting a faster uh, canopy and, and speeding up your harvest. So um yeah it's it's interesting to hear from these guys and hear their life stories and so that's sort of season one and then for season two uh we're still you know if you know some good breeders that that would fit the bill uh let us know we're always looking we're, we haven't done all those interviews yet i did get to interview mr soul over with brothers Grimm. um interestingly enough just a little fun fact about him that most people may not know is that he was a, a nuclear engineer by day and a breeder by night, which is pretty crazy. Wow. So um, smart dude, a uh, really interesting life story. And uh, I was, I was, it was a lot of fun chatting with him too. Definitely. I bet, man, that you just blew my mind with that. Wow. That's impressive. You know, I just like here, we have a micro grow that just opened a, a couple of weeks ago and they just had their grand opening on Friday and the owner, is a doctor and people are like, what? Really? And uh, I'm like, I didn't even know that. And I'm interviewing the guy. And then I found out last night he was a doctor. And I'm like, well, that explains it because that place was clean like a doctor's office. I'll tell you, it was impressive. Yeah. So, but I do know a few breeders. I might have to throw you guys away. I'd, I'd like to see, see some stories come out of the mint in here. You know, we, we have, we have some interesting stories, um, for example, and I, I don't mean to cut you guys off, just to give you guys some ideas. Um, 
So have yeah. you guys heard of Rain Rainbow Farms? I haven't. I don't. I, want, I don't know the breeding side very well, though. So uh, it, this isn't a breeding place. This is was a, an event. It was a place for everybody to come together here in Michigan. Oh, okay. And I don't want to give the whole story away because there is some controversy to it. But I, it's a good story to be told. And they're actually producing a movie on it. If you get a chance, just type in Rainbow Farms on YouTube and you'll see the story and you're definitely going to want to connect with the people. And if you do, let me know. I'll connect you with the right people here. That's um, awesome. Thank because you. we have, we have a, a, an event place here, another great story called Big Cloud Farms. And, and it's another place. And they put on huge events. And that's where I met Mendo Dope, which you guys reached out to me about. I've actually had the process and the opportunity to sit down with them twice this past year. Um, they nice. came out, out and hung out and partied with us and had a good time. And yeah, they gave me their number. And I always respect, you know, I always respect. I passed it on to them. I haven't heard anything back, but I know they're on the road a lot. So mm -hmm. definitely, you know, if I can get you guys connected, I'd love to see what, I'd love to hear their story on your guys' take because, like I said, you guys already drawn me in. I, I listen to, because I do 6,500 miles a month. I listen to a lot of pod. Yeah, I did listen to a lot of podcasts. And yeah. I'm addicted to you guys already because I was a history nerd in school. I was such a history nerd that my senior year, I didn't have to take government because I had too many history credits. <laughs> and they were yeah. like, well, you can't take anymore. And I'm like, okay, well, I didn't want to learn about our presidents anyway. That wasn't the history I was interested in. So thank you. <laughs> but definitely, you know, and um, I'm glad to have you guys on. I want to ask some questions about you guys for a few seconds and not take up too much of you guys this evening here, you know. Um, but let's let's hear a little bit about how you guys got into the industry and when was the first time you guys came across actually experiencing cannabis? Okay, I guess uh, I'll start that one. Um, I, I, I started early, man. Uh, <laughs> I started early. I was probably early teens. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those things sometimes you, uh, you don't know you're using it medicinally until you figure it out later, but I, I think I really was. Um, so it, it kind of started early, but I was more uh, involved with like the advocacy side of things. Um, maybe about 15 years ago, kind of in Washington, we had a medical program here. Uh, I was a big advocate for that, thinking that more people could benefit from the information. Uh, not something for everybody. I, I wouldn't recommend it for everybody, but I want to try to educate everybody. So that that was kind of how I got onto that with the plant um, and, and the education side. And, and real quick, sorry to derail, sidetracked here. I do see some awesome people in chat that I recognize. And Rusty Nails is tossing out some good suggestions for breeders. So definitely noted. Definitely, Rusty Nails. definitely. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, I have to say Tom Hill was someone that I recognized from IC Mag back in the day as like just growing these massive trees way back uh, when everyone else was afraid to grow plants. He was, yeah, he was definitely someone that I would love to talk to. He was kind of just this like mysterious figure. Uh, and, you know, he had his recipe on IC Mag and would post every so often. That Yeah, that's a cool name to see on there for sure. Yeah. So hopefully, yeah. hopefully we get that route, yeah. Yeah, and if there's anybody, you know, that you see that I've connected with, I feel like the biggest thing I've always said since my first day doing any shows was, you know, there's enough chairs around the table for everybody to pull up and have a play in this industry. I'm not greedy. So let's help each other grow, you know, definitely. And that's, that's the way I was raised, you know, it's just, I, I can't help it. You know, I'm, I'm always one to help other people grow. You know, when, when I talk to a couple of people and they're like, hold up, you're a podcast and you're going to have another podcast come on your podcast to talk about their podcast. And I'm like, absolutely. <laughs> I'm like, absolutely. Why not? You know, we're all in this together, yeah. you know, definitely, definitely. So, you know, that that's 
definitely interesting to hear that from you. What about you, Tad? I mean, how did, how did you first incept the plant? Yeah, well, before we go to me, I just want to say Chad also, you know, we didn't really talk about our bios, but Chad has uh, does work with the Future Cannabis Project. Uh, he writes for Sensi Seeds. He's got a Chad Westbrook wow. channel. So he already had all these things going on before <laughs> we ever met. Um, yeah. And he puts out a lot of great educational stuff too. So I just, want to, just want to throw that out there. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm the worst self promoter you will ever meet. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am too. So uh, I guess for me, I grew up with my parents owning a plant nursery. I've been around plants my whole life. Um, kind of more of the uptight straight edge guy uh, all through college after college. Um, and I came back with a master's degree from Australia. I was 28 and my brother or, or my, my father had started, they'd sold the nursery and he started a compost tea business. And um, I didn't know much about compost tea, soil biology, all those things. I found it really interesting. So I started helping him out and I got this phone call from this guy and he's like, yo, I'm growing 30 tomato plants in my basement. <laughs> uh you know how can i how can i use compost tea and all this stuff to really make them take off and it took me it took me a second to figure it out and then i started googling i was like hey you know who else, you know are growers using this technology compost tea and so i started looking into it and then i, I got on ic mag in the organic soil section and that's where i met like clackamas coot this guy uh jay kush was on there uh jeremy from build a soil joined a little later on in the game he was in there at one point um uh oh man there were just there were so many people uh this guy aj who went by swami seeds now uh we were all talking in there um and that's that's kind of where it all started oh and tim wilson from uh uh microbe organics who became a good friend of mine and so uh Throughout all of that, I started learning more about cannabis. I went to my first hydro shop. I was scared to death that there were like cops watching me enter because it was so sketchy. <laughs> and then you start talking to the guys in there and they don't really know anything. They're like, here, you can use, you know, advanced nutrients was really the, the big brand back in the day. And, and so uh, I had a very different experience than everyone else. Um, and so the first time I actually tried cannabis, I was probably like 28, 29 and I was scared. To, I was scared of it. So I actually went off into the woods, went on a hike in the middle of nowhere uh, by myself to try it for the first time. And frankly, it doesn't hit me like it hits you guys. I could I could tell you that right now. I uh, I get kind of lazy and I I, I I eat everything in sight. I'm not as productive. Um, it, it hits my brother and my dad very differently than me. Um, it puts me in a good mood, but like, I, I just, I don't, I think my endocannabinoid system is just different than mm -hmm. you guys. And, and that's the yeah. cool thing about cannabis too, is everyone can have a different experience. Um, and I, you know, as someone who enjoys a, a beer or a glass of whiskey, like I, I absolutely think cannabis is a much safer, better alternative than what my probably preferred choice is. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you're, you're absolutely right, too. You know, the endocannabinoid system is different. And, and, you know, I think that's great that you face the fear. Because, again, that's one thing that I try to get people to do. Just face the fear. And then, if it's not for you, that's fine. I've known plenty of people who it's not for. <laughs> definitely, <laughs> definitely. When, when I first yeah. smoked, like, back in the day, not like the very first time, but when I was doing it regularly, I could not, like even like an hour afterwards, I couldn't get in a car and drive because if I drove, my feet went numb and people didn't believe me. And I, couldn't feel the, I couldn't feel the gas pedal and my buddies would be in the back seat <laughs> laughing their ass off and, and we're doing 90 down the highway and they're oh, like, geez. what are you doing? And I'm like, oh shit, you know, like oh, probably not oh, the best wow. scenario, but yeah, yeah, definitely, you know. Save it, so, save it for the evening. Yeah. Right. I, right. I, I mean, I still partake from time to time, but like my big passion in the industry is the cultivation side. Like I, yeah. I love the fact that there's so much we, we're still learning about this plant and that's, that's where else, where it all started for me. And then, you know, starting up a, a gardening soil business around this and having a, a cultivation podcast that's all science-based has been like the main focus. And this just came across as something that uh, is kind of a side passion project that's been really fun uh, more than anything. Um, because that, I mean, that's why Chad and I are doing it at this point. It doesn't, 
it doesn't make us any money. It's just something we really enjoy. <laughs> and, yep. and, and that is definitely the fun thing about, you know, just like growing in general too. Um, the cannabis industry tends to have a lot of uh, fresh blood or new blood, people that are looking to expand their knowledge base, looking to break out of the textbook format. So uh, pushing that envelope in a scientific way uh, is great. It's fun. It's it's its own high in itself. I, you know, I enjoy the types of conversations. Definitely. I look forward to it every week because I live in a small town. I'm kind of a sheltered person, believe it or not. I have social anxiety. Most of the people that do radio and stuff do. And that's a little mm. secret that most people don't know. And uh, I I do. I do. But you get me into something I know or I, I'm passionate about and I'm comfortable enough to talk. Otherwise, if you probably see me in person, I probably, unless I knew, like I know you guys now. But like if I didn't just see you guys, I would not walk up and talk to you. I would just stay to myself and that's how i've always been and now i'm getting out of my shell and it's great because i look forward to conversations every week with new people it's so interesting to hear people's story you know and go ahead sir no i'm please finish I, well i was gonna travel into the next question for you guys we got a, <laughs> we got a few here but i wanted to let you guys if you had anything to say i didn't want to cut you off definitely I was just going to say, you, you had talked to Jorge uh, Cervantes the other day, and that's someone who we do have upcoming as a guest. Uh, we still have, so like Tad was saying, we've released the first four episodes. We still have Ed Rosenthal, Wolf Siegel, uh, Jorge Cervantes, and Tommy Chong coming up. Um, but he's a fascinating man to talk to. Was there anything that you may have like pulled from that conversation that you didn't know of like, wow, really? that was the past because Jorge Cervantes uh, pretty much every sentence is something that can be a knowledge bomb for people. Well, you know, I like, like I told him, I, I was an outdoor organic grower with my grandfather. We, we buried fish. We, we used uh, cow manure and screened good topsoil from a local nursery. We built and amended our own plot we, we did everything that way. And then when I, you know, I've been a medical patient since 2009. And um, I decided I wanted to grow more than what I was allowed in the garden. So I came across his book, you know, and I, like I told him, I used to carry it in my back pocket out in the garden. And I learned how to put the duct tape on the bottom of the shoes and he laughed about that, you know, and I, I learned how to hide them and all that. This was how it was back then. And uh, I had a bunch of stuff, you know, planted elsewhere and um, it turned out great. And, you know, and then he broke it into like, he's wrote like 50 books and I'm like, Oh, well, that's probably not your first one. And he, then he got into it and, and I, you know, in some of the ways he talks about, you know, such as like, you know, Spain and Barcelona and stuff, they're not big on edibles like the United States. They, uh, they actually prefer their hash instead, and they get the chance to import that Moroccan hash that we all wish we had. And um, yeah, I mean, and then he's talked, you know, how, you know, they used to print their books in China but ship them to Wisconsin and store them in a warehouse and then distribute them to, from there because everything was cheaper. It was cheaper to print in China, but it was cheaper to ship out of Wisconsin hmm. than it was this country where he was. And, and he, like he said, but it got so expensive and now you can get so much free information off the internet. Yeah. So, yeah. Was, yeah. That's good, man. I'm, I'm glad you got to talk to him and I'm excited for that episode of yep. history to, to drop because he, uh, like you said, I, I have his book. I love his book. It's actually, you can still see it back there. <laughs> yep. And then, you know, I got Jeff's books too, which if I ever get the chance to connect with him, I'd love to have him on the show too, because I read all his micro books and mm -hmm. You know, that's there's a lot of good education out there, and a lot of these guys, and that's why back to your guys' show, that's why I love it so much. Is you guys are giving a chance 
for these people that such as myself that might not have came across these pioneers of the industry um a chance to hear that story and educate people so that they don't say well cookies is old school no that you got to take it back a little farther than that <laughs> you know and 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 it's definitely uh it, it's definitely you know there's a lot of great stories and history to be told you know i i i for one like i said i'm hooked i'm waiting for it i'm waiting to hear some of that 70s knowledge of breeders and growers and them people you know i ain't been in the industry as long as you guys have so i don't know who, who to talk to yet i'm still meeting people and uh for you guys to be able to tell these stories and i hear them and i'm like man that is impressive mm. it's like i said you guys got you guys got the dialogue to hook the person in to continue it's almost like sitting down with your favorite netflix show or your favorite sitcom or whatever that you want to call it i don't watch tv i don't even have cable but uh um long story short you know whatever you want to watch you get binged into it and that's what i did with you guys you know i nice. I, came, I came across you guys and i listened to all of them except for the last one all in one day you know i sat there one right after another and i'm like man this is impressive i'm like okay and that's when i was like okay i got to reach out to these guys and i got to hear more you know i want to hear the story behind this podcast and here we are definitely i think for for you guys coming on here yeah thank you for reaching out for sure you know again this is a a passion for for both of us um but i'm glad that the two of us are working together on it because i think we each bring special things to the table and it just makes makes a, a better package in the end um i definitely I couldn't have come up with this by myself. Uh, so, you know, Tech got the ball rolling, and I'm like, well, geez, you know what? Yeah, that does need to happen. So, yeah, it's, definitely, it's definitely, you know, I'm already waiting for the next one. You know, I, I, if you don't mind me asking, you know, with our show, it's a lot different than other shows. And I, I try to explain this to people. People are like, do you guys have a scheduled day? We actually fit our schedule because we are on unedited unscripted the whole nine it's off the fly so i make it fit people's schedule so that's why different ones come out at different times but it's always great because you can go back and play the recap but with you guys is there a set day that the episodes drop on or you know we haven't even talked about that i dropped this last one on monday so i'll probably drop the following one the next one the following monday um that okay. seems to be our, our current schedule uh it's just the two of us though and, and a sound engineer so that could change but uh that's the plan right now but i'm glad i'm glad you were able to binge them and enjoy them i mean the whole goal with this like in my head originally was that like you could sit down with like a buddy or your wife or your girlfriend your partner and just smoke a joint and hear like a cool story about someone you may not have known about or, or things about someone you may not have known and man i i would love to down the road interview like Snoop or Martha Stewart or like Mike Tyson or like some of these celebrities, um, even, you know, Willie Nelson. But then I also want to tell the stories of like the people that you've never heard of that have gone through some of just the wildest shit you could possibly imagine for this plant. Mm -hmm. um, and so I really I think this could go a lot of directions. And that's the thing I'm most excited about this is like so many people have a relationship with cannabis. So many people yeah. have been impacted by this plant, you know, um, in, in good ways and bad ways. Um, we just want to like save those stories. And I don't care if it's not exactly historically accurate, like Chad said, if we can just make it, if it can be entertaining, it can be this, the, 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 what the, the person believes is their narrative, then I, I want to capture that and, and share it as it is. So that's definitely, definitely. I got a friend named Nick. He put on an event this year and he just moved from, I want to say it was Tennessee down that way to Michigan and he became a caregiver and he gives RSO to so many patients and helps so many people. And he's, I, I say it's selfless, not like people would think not selfish, selfless. He, he gives so much to help others. Well, he put an event on here in town and I was like, with another buddy of mine who was a geologist and a, and a soil guy here locally. And um, he teaches for the university of, Michigan State University and um, 
but he uh he he connected me with this guy they partnered up on an event and this guy got lyme disease and he overcame it by using cannabis and i was like wow, wow man you know like it's impressive you know and, and he wanted to help others it, it, stories like that you don't hear about that kind of stuff you know like you guys said you know some of the stories are are so unique you know you got the big ones and the little ones and that's what we do here too but on a totally different we're totally different than you guys you guys make it more like yes like you said like like a serial story versus more of an i'm more of an interview type tell your story type you guys kind of it's almost like listening to somebody i guess read a read a life like a book i don't know how to explain it any other way and uh that's what drawed me in you know i'm out on the road i'm driving and i'm like man i and i'm like I, there's something new I, something new i gotta listen to you know i've listened <laughs> to everybody else and uh I just typed in words, just started keywording it, and you guys popped up, and I'm like, "Whoa!" I'm like, "This is cool. I love history." Oh, wow. Here we go, you know. So you know, like like you said, Tad, you, you get the munchies when you smoke. So that goes to my second question. I like to ask everybody, and that is, what is your go-to munchie? You know, everybody has one. <laughs> Dad. <laughs> uh, I, I, well, I guess I'll go first and then I got to hop off because I got to go uh, help out with my three-year-old with the family. Sure. Uh, boy, for me, it's probably just some tortilla chips. I'll make nachos. <laughs> That's probably what happens. <laughs> and then I'll just put whatever's in the fridge on them. And then later I'll be like, I, that was disgusting. Why did I do that? <laughs> but it's so delicious in the moment. So... Yeah, yes. that's embarrassing. I can't believe I shared that, but <laughs> <laughs> no. oh, that's great. Well, I, I I appreciate you taking time out of your evening, definitely, and I appreciate you coming on the organically blunt show. I know what it's like to have to take care of a family. You know, that comes first. So you do that, and I want to connect with you in the future, and maybe we can have you come on and talk about your soil and stuff in the future. Because uh, right now, I'm gonna be one of the couple of the upcoming episodes next week, depending if I get my shipment in time, <laughs> I'm going to be doing a episode with Jeremy from build soil. Okay. And we're going to be showing how to rejuvenate and reamend your soil to reuse it because so many people and me included, and I didn't know you could do it. You know, I knew you could do it outside. You, you don't throw your soil away. But indoor, I kept throwing it away because I live in a housing complex. Mm -hmm. To find yeah. out how we can reamend it is going to be interesting. But I'm testing a lot of different brands of soil, and I'm always looking for education. So I would love to connect with you in the future. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there, yeah. we there we go. Yeah. Right? Yeah, this is my yeah. this is my amendment right here. This is definitely this is my, this is my baby. Definitely. <laughs> Yeah. So I yeah. appreciate you. If you got to go, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I know how to connect with you. We'll reach out in the near future and we'll get something scheduled with you. Definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. And if you're interested in the cultivation side, uh, check oh, out the cannabis uh, cultivation and science podcast. That's the one that we've been, I've been doing for a long time. I think we're over 2 million downloads now. It's been real popular, wow. but it's, uh, it gets a little technical, but um if, if you're interested in science-based cultivation, I think it's a, I think it's a good resource. Yeah, definitely. So. definitely. Thanks I guys. Chad, time. great to see you. Good Jay, to see you, great Ted. To meet you. Have a good night. Yep. Enjoy you time. Too. Thank you. Right. Yeah. I uh, love, love to build the soil too. Uh, but yeah, I've been, I've been rocking with this lately. I've been doing, I've been okay. doing like water only soils. Yep. Um, we're we're going to be so. testing and here's some stuff for even the audience. You know, I, I've been keeping on the wraps, but for everybody out there that's watching, we're going to be doing some testing. I'm going to, I run a five by five. I don't have a lot of room. I run a five by five gorilla tent and we're going to be testing yeah. Sohum, Sohum Living Soil, S-O-H-U-M. Yes. And we're, we're going to be testing Promix. Promix has got me out some stuff. And we're going to be testing um, Build a Soil too. And we're going to be testing basically all the same cultivar or phenol however you want to say it um 
and I'm going to run nine plants in a five by five, three, three in each soil. So we have kind of, you know, a good testing ground and we're going to see how things perform. And I'm not technical like a lot of people or scientific, but we're going to show what I call layman's terms, the results of somebody that might not be as educated. And that's what I try to do. That's an awesome idea, dude. I like it. That is a great yeah. way for people to kind of, you know, get. see, that's the fun thing about the community and, and sharing our information. It's like we all get to learn from each other because there's only so much time in a year. There's only so much space in a, in a tent. We can't do it all. But no. to have somebody take three different things that were like, I kind of always wanted to try that and then just run them side by side. I love yep. that, man. That's, that's educating and helping people give a choice. And I like the water only soils for again, getting new people growing. Like that's a big thing that I try to push is to encourage that. And a great way to encourage it is to make it easy to take some of the, you know, demystify it a little bit. So awesome, man. Good idea. Yep. And I hope that goes well for you. Definitely, definitely. So if you don't mind, I, I want to ask the same second question. I have roughly four questions that I yeah. asked, and then I'll let you end the show, and you can plug anything you want and let people know where you find you. We won't take up too much more of your time because we're, we're hitting the 42-minute mark right about now. So, um, you know, what is your go-to, Munchie, you know? Yeah, uh, my go-to munchie probably was like cookies, but I'm really trying to do less sugar, man. Like less sugar, more things with words I can pronounce in the ingredients. So yep. lately, you know, if, if I do it, it's, it's like a peanut butter cracker, like a Ritz peanut butter cracker. I'm okay. so uneventful, <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's my munchies. Now back in my heyday, I mean, we're talking like chili cheese Fritos with mustard on white bread sandwiches. So <laughs> yep, that's, yep, that's, definitely. that's back definitely. in the day. <laughs> yep. Uh, so, you know, with that, with that being said, that rolls into the second question. It's kind of a question that a lot of people are like, Oh, well, I got to think about it. Okay. So this question is, where is the sketchiest or most riskiest place that you have partaked cannabis? Ooh, that is a good question because usually I don't care. Now, vape pens have made this a lot easier because you can pretty right. much do that everywhere. But smoking... <laughs> smoking smoking was probably like i was one of those kids under the bleachers in the football game like nobody's gonna smell it right so i don't know i was always you know kind of open the door on the back of uh auto shop they can't smell it right uh i just went for it <laughs> so i can't i can't think of anything like highly classified right or those types of areas but uh yeah I think just going for it, man. <laughs> just go for it. Good question. Uh, Good question. Sacred Garden said, Father, forgive me in the attic at church. <laughs> right? I definitely yeah. definitely. You know, <laughs> so so you know, and that, that gets to our last question here. Um, and that is, you know, if you could smoke with anybody, dead or alive, who would it be and why? That would be, that's a really good question. Like I would definitely want to smoke with a thinker, someone who can maybe give me a little bit of philosophy or just perspective um, or just even just like knowledge. Um, you know what? I, you know, like MLK, Martin Luther King Jr. would be a fascinating person to sit and smoke a joint with. Um, just the life that he lived, the things that he did and, you know, the mission that he carried and, and, you know, the obvious is, is about race. Um, but, uh, a little, you know, maybe people know, maybe people don't know a lot of his, his work kind of shifted into, um, like the economics of things before he was assassinated, you know, kind of realizing some of these 
problems were also an economic problem. So I, I would love to talk more about that because I personally, um, you know, <laughs> there's rich people and then there's people who don't have a whole bunch of money and people with a whole bunch of money, A, tend to live better lives, but B, also tend to have a lot more privilege. So there, there, is, there is almost a distinction and, and I would really love a harmonious like community. I think that's something that he was, he was working towards, but that's something I would love to see. So that's something that I would love to get stoned with a person who really did some work and just be like, bro, how could we like, how could we just all get along? You know, that type right. of thing. So that's yeah, it, it's so insp inspirational. You know, I, I would sit there and I, I don't even know if I would want to talk. I just want to listen. I would want to <laughs> absorb everything because the, the knowledge that's like, you know, we hear a lot of people say like Gandhi and Muhammad Ali and you all know, good answers. Like, yeah. Yeah. Bob Marley and, um, it's all great answers. You know, it's all people I would love to, too, you know, and, and I, I just couldn't imagine, you know, wh what it, what it would be like, but definitely, you know, a lot of the events that we have here in Michigan are just like Martin Luther King Jr. And, and his father wanted an atmosphere to be, you know, Everybody gets together. There's no drama. There's young. There's old. There's blacks. There's whites. There's Puerto Ricans. There's Indians. There's so many people that show to these events that the cultural differences, they'll blow your mind. And it's like, wow, everybody came together. There's no drama. Mm -hmm. And we all came together for something great, you know, and and it's great, you know, and I, I don't I can't say that it's like that at other cannabis related events because I've never been out of the state of Michigan to a different one. But I can say here in Michigan, it is a great atmosphere to get involved in. Definitely. Yeah. It it is. It's amazing what this plant can do as like a community builder. Because yeah, there's people that, you know, if I was sitting next to them at the bus stop, we're probably not having a conversation. But right. we're or, or maybe we are at the bus stop and one of us sparks up that we are going to have a conversation, but you know, in the same field at these events, you know, you're just like, Hey dude, you want to hit this? It's, right. You know, exactly. Yeah. We, yeah, we, that, all, that, we all have that, that in common. Yeah. That's like, I was standing there. I was doing video of the whole set and I put it on our Instagram of Mindo dope boys playing their whole set at big wow. cloud farms. And, um, you know, a lady comes up to me and I'm rocking. I'm I, I'm a fanboy. I'll lie. I, I'm not lying. And I, it's I, cool. I, and, uh, <laughs> I uh, get it. I know, I know all their lyrics because I love their music and uh, I love what they do, you know, because I grew big plants like they did. My biggest one was 16 and a half foot wedding cake. Jeez. Yeah. You can find the picture on our Instagram. I'm on a ladder. It's over the top of me. It's pretty cool. It was blown in the wind over a camper. I had to pull a camper in front of our garden. And you can still see it from the road blowing in the top cola. And uh, it was insane. And I learned all that knowledge from them guys and what to put in the soil. Well, when I met him and, 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 and he says to me, he hands me, because his brother brother wasn't there, and he hands me, uh, hands me a doobie. And I'm like, are you serious right now? And he's like, dude, hit it. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, you don't got to tell me twice. I'm just like <laughs> flabbergasted that you handed it to me and you acknowledged I was standing there. And now they know who I am. You know, I've had him on the show, I think, two times total. And, uh, yeah, they're, they're great people. You know, they're very down to earth. And that's what I like meeting is a lot of people that aren't – thinking they're above everybody that we're all the same and we're all yeah. in it for the same thing, you know, and it, it, it great. It's great. Yeah. You know? So with that being said, you know, we're 10 minutes from the hour mark here. I don't want to take up too much more time of your evening. Where can they find your podcast? What's the name of it? Where can they connect with you? And is there anything we should look forward to even from you coming in the near future? Yeah, no, thanks for the opportunity. And you mentioned that 16 foot plant and the Mendo Dope Boys, like that is a life goal of mine. And they are the standard of which I will judge it again. Like when people are like, so what, what is like your cannabis goal? It's like, I want to grow a Mendo Dope plant. 
like I can't like grow yeah, outside right. <laughs> in the atmosphere or in the environment where I'm at. It just won't work. But right. that is definitely a life goal. Like at some point I will have to grow a Mendodo plant. But yeah, dude, that's hashtag life goals. Um, oh, definitely. <laughs> yeah. To, to find us on the podcast is the Dope History. Uh, it's Dope History Podcast on Facebook and Twitter, I believe. Um, but you just find everything related to it. Simple enough. Dopehistory.com dopehistory.com it's got you know the about section it's got some of our previews for episodes but you can also play all of the episodes right there as well it's it's there on the major streaming platforms you had mentioned spotify uh apple podcast and that's something i'm always curious too if people see a comment section or hit me up and chat or see me in chat let me know where you're listening because i've never done it again this is Tad and his awesome expertise and his experience with doing the cannabis science or it's cannabis science and cultivation podcast. Yep. Um, he knows about like RSS feeds and sending it out to different platforms. I'm just like, uh, I hit record on YouTube and that's how I do my stuff. So I'm, yes. I, I'm the same way, but you know, we started on Spotify here as an audio nice. only show. Like I said, before we started, I won't keep you much longer here, but um, no, we're good. Know, dude. Uh, we're good. Okay. Okay. Just making sure. Um, but you know, um, and, and we were all audio and I started looking at our analytics and, you know, our audience is mostly, um, 30 to 44 year old males. Mm -hmm. And, 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 but the thing is, is where our demographic came from, it's blown, it blew my mind. Not only do we have, you know, massive mass majority in the United States, but, we were having people from Canada and British Columbia, nice. Tur Turkey, South Africa, Whoa. and I'm like, in the UK and Spain, and I'm like, wow, how are these people hearing about me? Because I'm not advertising there. So like, it, it just blows my mind how much education can travel. And, um, you know, that's what we, we, we plan to do is educate here, the lifestyle of cannabis, and what surrounds it. So like, like the intro says of our podcast, we, our plan is to cover everything that has to do with it from the food you eat to the clothes you wear to maybe even the house you live in. It might be made from hemp fiber wood. We don't know if we find somebody along the way that has a story to tell like that, reach out to us. You know, we want to, we want to tell how this plant works in more than one way than, than one and how, how it connects the people in different ways and how it's making a better environment for everybody. Yeah, it's, a, it's an excellent point. There's multiple uses for this plant, uh, whether Definitely. ingestible or not, whether it's a fiber to build a house, whether it's, you know, a fuel to build a, or to, to fuel a car. Um, yeah, yep. so many different uses. Um, Definitely. That's awesome. And, and I see you real quick here to uh, Rusty Nails and chat to contact us on the Dope History website. Um, that will be going to an email Tad is checking. Um, I do also have a Chad at Dope History. I'm not sure. It hasn't been forwarding yet. So we're working on my email. But uh, yes, the contact page on dopehistory.com is working and we will get the message. So we will see them there. If you guys have you know any suggestions or just want to let us know where you're listening, that's dope. So yeah, definitely, it, 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 definitely. Uh, and uh, and like like a lot of the audience has said, I don't like to say it a whole lot because it's self promotion, kind of like you said. But hey, if you guys are listening out there and and you don't know when we're gonna go live, make sure you click that bell and you subscribe yes. to our channel because YouTube, unfortunately, I found out it's not just a a rumor. They really don't let people know when you go live, and sometimes people you know don't know and they have to get the recap so and we love we love interacting with you guys the audience we appreciate you coming on chad appreciate yeah. you being a part of the organically blunt family now welcome to the family and we look forward to following up with you maybe towards the end of the year and see how things are going with dope history and where you guys are at with it you know absolutely absolutely man and thank you for for inviting us on and you know congratulations Definitely. on the show and getting into the video side of it in 2023 Definitely. man uh Definitely. we're, we're going to be busting and i hope you're busting too so we'll, we'll keep putting out the contact and yeah hopefully we'll get together before 
before that, you know, end of the year, easy peasy. Hopefully we get together again another couple of months here. Uh, just touch base, man. It's been a fun conversation. So thank you. Definitely. Appreciate yeah. you. You have a great evening and thank you for coming on the Organically Blunt Show. Peace out. Thank you. You've been listening to the Organically Blunt Show, a cannabis lifestyle podcast that's raw, uncut, and unedited. Thanks for listening to the show. We would like to give thanks to this episode's partners. Grow Strong Industries, the mother brand of Gorilla Grow Tint, Kind LED, and Lotus Nutrients. Use coupon code Organically Blunt. Seedsman Seeds, a trusted seed bank with over 20 years in the industry. Use coupon code Organically Blunt. 10. Horticulture Lighting Group, HLG, real efficiency, real yields, and made in the USA. Use coupon code Organically Blunt. Rain Science Grow Bags, one of a kind mesh grow bags that eliminate problems and increase yields. Use coupon code Organically Blunt. Grove Bags, the best curing solution to save terps. Use coupon code Organically Blunt. Captain Redbeard Seeds, genetics that are loyal to the soil. Use coupon code Organically Blunt. Humboldt Seed Company, Humboldt's original seed. Use coupon code Organically Blunt. Fish Head Farms, the maker of fish shit. The most robust beneficial bacteria on the market. Use coupon code Organically Blunt. Sofim Genetics. Quality genetics at a fair price. Use coupon code Organically Blunt. Green Wolf Genetics. These genetics come from a wolf pack that runs with quality and no BS. Use coupon code Organically Blunt. Utopic Essential Nutrients. Discover the truth. Use coupon code Organically Blunt. Stream Gardening. World Leading Mycorrhizal Fungi. Dry Tents. Because we all need a place to dry that harvest. Use coupon code Organically Blunt. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to comment, like, and subscribe. And in the meantime, follow us on Instagram at Organically Blunt or on Social Club at Organically Blunt. You can reach us also via email at organicallyblunt at gmail.com. Organically Blunt can be found where you listen to podcasts such as iHeartRadio, Spotify, YouTube, Stitcher, Anchor.fm, and Apple Podcasts. See you next time on the Organically Blunt Show.